So we basically got most evidence or the as much evidence as we can. I think we didn't miss any. Hopefully. We'll save it here. September 7th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number one. Court is now... Wait. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Faith. I don't know how to do Edgeworth voice. Any recommendation? <clears throat> ah, the prosecution is ready, your honor. The defense is ready, your honor. Miles Edgeworth. I would better not show any signs of weakness today or he will be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Oh, thank you, your honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her to do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the fact of this case, your honor. Oh, I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, your honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in the charge of homicide down the, at the pre precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Uh, very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon even in a girl's hands, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Fuller plans added to the court record. Now, detective. Yeah, yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yeah, yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. As soon as the phone call, Nick, as soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination? What? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh! Smack! Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What is this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in the witness testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked a lot of times. Hey, I should have expected Maya could, would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, your honor. I would like to begin my cross-examination. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. Press! Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Uh, hmm, right. Uh, I would say it was about three minutes. I mean...
There's no no presenting anything. Back. That's pretty fast. Our motto this month is quick response. That's how I got there before the killer got away. Indeed. So tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. Yes, sir. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why is that? What's your reason? Why? We had a witness account describing her. We had a witness account describing her. Press. Hold on just one second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly, you say you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it. Correct? Huh? Did did I say that? M me, me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? W what? Miss May isn't suspicious and she sure isn't Pink, pal. Well, I guess she is Pink. That's enough. Detective Gavishu, do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm. I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Ah. Sorry, I got the order things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab, tests, lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Is presenting your badge a meme? Because why you keep saying that? I don't understand. Before we begin cross examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this viral piece of evidence the first time? Uh, uh, I know, I'm real embarrassed, I forgot about it, your honor, sir. <clears throat> Try to be more careful. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. The bed thing is a meme? I see. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. <laughs> Objection! <laughs> you got no eyes! I found a memo written on a piece, piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Press! Do you have proof it was Mia who wrote that? Of course I do, pal. Uh-oh, he sounded pretty confident this might not be good. Lab test results show that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Oh. Detective Gumshu, do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually write the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies. This isn't a movie, Detective. Oof. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess. I haven't heard of many cases, no. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially a name of her own sister? Ah, yeah, well actually you got a point, pal. Stop right there. <laughs> the witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order, order! That didn't go so well. That, 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 that's right. What he said. 
That's his whole testimony, but okay, there has to be some contradiction in there somewhere, let's find it. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to... I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Mm. Present? Do you think it's not Maya? This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are that evidence and the statement has just now re related? They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. White, please think of the facts over before making accusations! No! Oh, you know what? Let's take a look. Time of death, 9 p.m. Cause single blunt force trauma. Death was instantaneous. INSTANTANEOUS! Before she died... You guys ready? Three... Two... One... OBJECTION! <laughs> Detective Gumshoe! There's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fei, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Mia Fei. That's really what you're saying? What? what, what? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course you wrote it, who else would have? You have it backwards, detective. But backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But no but. You're way out on this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who have died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but uh, when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? Wh when? The day after the murder. Right? Yeah, the day after, because she died at the 9 p.m. night before, and then the girl found... Her sister found it at like 10 a.m. It was the day after the murder. The persecution's points being... That autopsy report is outdated, your honor. What? what A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object, but there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No, no way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I, I see. Damn you, Edgeworth! I should have known you would have something up your sleeves. <laughs> Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham. The detective's a sham. I'm a sham. Can I not say anything? I'm a sham! <laughs> I don't know, man. What, what do you want me to say? It's all bad. You're a sham, Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. 
What reason could you possibly have had a request to a second autopsy report? M Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the persecution. <laughs> no matter, your honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will. The evidence in this report is undeniable. Your honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts this evidence. Die from a blow by a blunt object may have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Well, your honor... The evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The uh, prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl who saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Witness your name, please. April May, at your service! Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Oh, tell us. Where were you on the night of the September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Co. law offices. Um, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. It was like 9 at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, <gasps> I saw a woman with the long hair being attacked. That one attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman like dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Hmm. Well, your honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony, but I don't see a need to trouble the witness any- w Wait, your honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness testimony just now was quite firm, did you not? Mr. Wright, I understand you were- Miss Mia Face under understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques very well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny results in the perfectly good testimonies. Hey, hey! How dare you! Well, Mr. Ryan, will you cross-examine the witness? Yeah, I'm doing it. I will gladly proceed. If only because I have a feeling that Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have more some weakness. Very well, you may- wait, 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 wait. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. <clears throat> it was like 9 at night. I looked out the window, you know. Let me just see those evidence here. And then... 9.27 a.m. Oh, at 9. Azure Flux, thank you very much for 25 months. Thank you, thank y'all. Mm. She can only see the sofa, painting, or the desk. So, like, no. She cannot see the desk, I guess. 
It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know, and then ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Defendant's chair. Can she see that? She cannot see that. So let's present this. You guys ready? Three, two, one! Objection! Your Honor, that statement contradicts this evidence. It does? I don't see anything contradict- Wait, what? But the chair, dude! She said she was able to see the chair, though. <laughs> Excuse me. I feel like I got sold. The chair's- Where the freaking chair? Dude, she cannot see the chair, dude! Oh, they have the chair in the room you're in! Jesus Christ. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. Mm, maybe we can press her. Nine at night, I looked out the window, you know. And then I saw the... The what? Wait, hold on. They couldn't really see that well from the hotel. The woman with long hair, that was Miss Faye? Uh huh. Slender, sort of. Well, some people might say pretty if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her? The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How do you know? How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she, she had a girlish physique. Women know this kind of thing. Look, I, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, your honor. He's right. I question the testimony. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? what? Miss May, I am willing to bet that you're lying. Are you telling me the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Ugh. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yeah, what is this meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this. I mean... Okay, if you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fei, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her! And I'm no ex expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus! Still, we don't know if she if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, your honor. I saw her, and so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Rawr. What are you trying to say, you mean liar? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the truffling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to... Remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, your honor. I'll be a good girl. I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then, the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her, and she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. That, that clock, um, kind of statue clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? <laughs> I see. <laughs> that is clearly not Maya. Even your own flashback says you're lying. <laughs> 
I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross examination. Well, they showed the core as a statue and not a clock. And then she said the clock thingy. So I think that's something that we want to take a look at. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. And the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That that clock. That kind of statue clock. The thinker, I think. Boom. We ready? Three, two, one. Objection. <laughs> Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Re revealing? Oh, like you like that, wouldn't you, Mr. Naughty Liar? You just said that the statue of the Thinker was a clock, but there was no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Ah! Another person in much the same position as you're recently calling this a clock too, and he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh, uh, oh. Um. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all the importance here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Oh, well that was close. If he stopped me there, the, the trial would have been over. Huh? What? So like, what's happening now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... Uh... Because I heard it. Yeah, I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law offices of Fay and Co. No, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law office of Fay and Co. where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, your honor. I can give up now. I'm not satisfied because... Oh... Uh... It wouldn't have wrong. It couldn't have wrong. Because she took out the battery. To put out... To put in the paper thing in the phone call. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork! How... How could you possibly... Just take a look right now! Oh! See anything interesting, your honor? It is as the defendants are. Say, this clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court that meaning of... The meaning of this. It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have wrong. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. F fat? Well, Miss May. <laughs> tisk tisk. Huh? Quite a show you have put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you have gotten one thing. Forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say, it cannot ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, your honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Ho oh, ho, 
possible, of course. I have proof. W what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I, I was listening, and now I will show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... Boom! My cell phone! Take that! Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Cool, <laughs> you have a girly phone. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This isn't my phone. Listen. This is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone! This, this wasn't brought to my attention! Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? Uh, a good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for this big fella. Let's hear the conversation, shall we? So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If he could. Ah, uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take out the clock workout, sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear. The clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Ah! Ma well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I, I saw that clock before. Um, um, what store was that again? I, I go to so many. Whoops, I forgot. So the witness has seen it before. That would make sense. The defendants have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes! The witness claims she has seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will pr pr uh, prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Boom! It is made by Larry Butts. Take that! It's simple. The, this clock was never in any store, ever. Wh what? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <sighs> oh, excuse not on sale today? Oh! <laughs> um. Ah! What just happened? What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die. Order. Order in the house. Whoa, whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Ugh. Uh, 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 uh oh, uh, um. <laughs> uh, silly me. <laughs> did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an option on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, your honor, allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... You held it. This is familiar territory, I'll just use the same approach as with... Larry. Miss May held that every clock in her hand. That that very clock in her hands. Mr. Wright, when was this? When she used it to strike the victim, when when else? Uh I guess she heard it? I don't know. Ah fuck! What is the meaning of this? Wait, hold on. Uh let's skip through this. No! I would like to... I would like to... Rewind. Rewind. 
Rewind, dude. Rewind. Rewind, please. May I rewind? Yes, wait, Mr. Liar. Didn't the murder take place at 9 at night? That's the exact time I ordered some room service from the Hotel Bellboy. Room service from the Hotel Bellboy. Okay. Incidentally, the bellboy collaborated. Oh. Corroborates the witness story. Ergo, she was not at the crime scene. Oh, ergo! Dude, it's been so long since I heard ergo. What's the difference between arg ergo and therefore? Is it just a cool way to say it? Ergo! Ergo. She <laughs> Ergo! She was not at the crime scene. Rock solid. It sounds fancy. Dude, I'm gonna say ergo every time now. Ergo! Mr. Wright, you have just made a serious accusation against a perfectly innocent woman. So sorry, your honor. That didn't go so well. But if that's the case, then how did she know the thinker was a clock? Wait! Your honor, I figured it out. There is one other way Miss April May could have known it was a clock. One way alone, and I have proof. Well, proof, you say? Then the court will examine your proof, Mr. Wright. How did the witness know the thinker was a clock? Wiretap? It has to be, right? It's pronounced ergo. Yo, did you know? I can pronounce it ergo too. The um three, two, one. Objection! Have a look at this. Ah! Oh, that, oh, 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 I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were taping the victim, Miss Mia Face Foam, were you not? Uh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It is trouble me that our witness has in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was taping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was clock. That is... Wait, hold on. Let me check. I mean, doesn't it say it's a clock? It's a clock. It's made up to look like a statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Brr, take that! I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, you have. S we have seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to me for. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like a statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April, April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That is how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... Objection! Your Honor, this... Is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. Uh, uh. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May! Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you liar! It's not fair! All of you ganging on me like that! 
I'm, I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Um, ha <laughs> That did it. The court seems the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why the wiretap? Miss May, why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this like a murder trial? Isn't it like a tippy tappy, you know, irrelevant? She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you are ta you're tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Well, at the time of the murder, I was in my hotel room getting room service. How could I have killed her? If you don't believe me, just ask the bellboy. Well, does the defense have anything to say? That's not what I asked. I asked why did she tap the phone? And then she never said anything about that. Can I actually get an answer to this? We'll call the bellboy as a witness, I guess. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you have sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. But why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I will consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. I never said she kill her. I mean, I made what were the options for like, well, how did you know that was a clock? Those two are both wrong. Like, you know, so I, I, not my fault. <laughs> and thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Faye. That is my condition. What? I would better find something suspicious in the bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Accept the condition! Alright, I've got nothing to lose. Except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh oh. Uh, um, wait. <laughs> Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we were ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Oh, yes sir. I forgot how I did the dude's voice. I think it was kind of close to the Edgeworth, so I'm kind of... Eh. I received your summon in the middle of the work, sir. I'm happy to be service. That tea set looks rather happy, so without further ado... The witness may begin his testimony. Oh, very good, sir. I am the head bed bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right, I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. I am the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. 
What do I have? Broken remain. We never use this glass shards. Hmm. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. You're sure it was Miss May? Eh? Miss April May herself. Uh, absolutely, sir. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Absolutely. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, uh, the guest, sir, uh, favored me with a, uh, an embracer, sir? Embracer? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But I'm not. But not a French kiss, sir. M more of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prism demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. Hmm. Let's ask uh, the 8 p.m. press. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May impersonally, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... Ahem, uh, ahem. The point being, I remember her quite well, sir. Yes, what then? It's no good. There's nothing here. Is, is that it? <laughs> Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. And now... If you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest! Wait! Please, wait! Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question, let me ask one last question question your honor i must object this charade of justice has gone on long enough now now mr edgeworth all right mr wright i'll give you one more question that is all okay this is really it now this is my last chance what do i ask him about i want to ask him if he always bring two glasses because we found two glasses, right, in the room. And there's only one girl in the room. Why would he bring two glasses, right? So me, but none of the question is that. Mm. Is there a safe? <laughs> safe. Uh, back. I guess I'll ask about... Well, okay, two people said room service. Tell me again about our uh, room service. Uh, again, sir? At exactly 9, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The guest had requested iced coffee, $18, was the charge, as I recall. I see. $18. Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Y yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know, and we don't skimp on the ice, sir. What did he say? What did you say? 
Ah, oh, um, rather quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss Maya's room? Or Miss May's room? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Um, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, well, quite. Indeed. Uh, it was the good barista there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention if... He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Ugh. You fool! I've done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then when you brought them in room service, you didn't see the man in the room. That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Would you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple, it was... The man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Your Honor, as has been precisely revealed, Miss April May was tap tapping the victim's phone. Yet, Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, my convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you would like, like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from the court. Upster amateur! These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defendant's argument. I expect the persecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Y yes. Y yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of Maya Fey. Court is adjourned. September 7th, 2.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright! You are amazing in there! R really? I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, um, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? The face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sets shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A, a lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis... Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. Counting on you. I asked for a full record of M April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow, but now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stri stricken from the record. 
I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center and it's up to me to set her free. To be continued! <laughs>